Uh, yeah, there's one extra rope. So um, this is part of a demo where I hope that everyone will be able to make things that, let's see if I can make this bigger. Oh yeah, it's here it is. That look like this. Um, we're, we've been making things like this and this. I'll, I'll pass it around later. But basically, um, it's a kind of braid. And we use rope to make it. Uh, typically, you, you, you see those braids, sorry. You see those braids more often when uh, people use uh, hair to do it. But if you use rope and make it go around and around, you know, whereas with hair, um, you need kind of, for example, three, uh, what do you call those, batches of hair. And each of them will participate in the braid, or maybe five or seven or six. But uh, with rope, you can make it go around. So you actually only need one length of rope, which is what I hope each of you have in your hands. Thank you. Uh, who wants? I'm sorry, we actually didn't bring enough. So, um, if are we all out? We're out. Okay. So, if you're not going to, you know, this is really optional. So, if you don't have to participate, but if you're not using a length of rope, please, I don't know, throw it backwards uh, so that somebody else can use it. Okay. So, here's what we're gonna do. Uh, Dylan, can, can you move it? The, the, the screen is not relevant anymore. So, I hope you could just look at this instead. Yeah, so uh, my lovely assistant, Dylan Thurston, uh, we're from Indiana University, and we are going to show you how to make some simple version of what's shown on the screen. Okay, so take your rope and just sort of uncoil it first. So uh, if you already have it, you know, we, when we gave it out, it was kind of knotted, but just uncoil it so you get a single length. And it's probably too long for uh, what you want to do, but, you know, uh, just uh, work with it. And you want to find something to go around, right? Because, you know, on the screen, that's the sort of the finished product. But to make it, you kind of need the, the thing that is going around. So what could be possible things to go around? Well, one possibility is your chair, excuse me, your chair back. So if you look at the back of your chair, if you turn your chair around, um, there's this uh, hole in the back middle. Just, just at the top, let me point at it. Like there, yes. Uh, oh, wow. This is the first time an ICFP speaker, speaker has been told to stay farther away from a microphone. Um, so yeah, just the top of the chair, um, that, that bridge area, that's a way to, that's something to go around. Or you could use your leg. Uh, you might need to cross your legs. Um, and uh, don't use your neck, OK? <laughs> All right. So uh, what you do is you kind of make, uh, you, you start with a length, and then you make it go around, OK? And uh, you, um, you want to uh, get to the point where you start to have a third round, OK? So what Dylan is demonstrating is that you kind of go around and around and around. So you can see right now that there, there are three uh, there's one place where you can, you can also just use your palm, the palm of your hand, by the way, to go around. Sorry. Can, is that okay? All right. I'm just going to assume this is okay. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, so yeah, just, uh, so you can see, uh, this, the, what's on the coat rack is what you want to have right now. Okay. So, uh, let me walk around just to make sure that whoever wants to do it, uh, is, is having it. Okay. Okay, because I thought if I walk around, I'll get farther away from the microphone. But go ahead. <laughs> okay, go ahead, go ahead. Yes, so Dylan's going to going to help people out. Okay. Right, so, so, uh, what Dylan just said is, uh, you want the radius to be kind of large, uh, because we're, what we're about to do is, uh, well, I'm sorry about the turning of the axis, but what you see on the screen, you kind of need to turn it vertical, yeah? So that, 
so, so the radius of what the loops you're making right now is going to be actually uh, even bigger, approximately, I think, maybe root two times the final size of whatever is going around. So for example, if you use your leg, then it should probably be root two times the radius of diameter of your leg, right? Don't just put it tighter on your leg or you later you're gonna cut off circulation. Okay, all right. Huh, are we ready? Yeah, everyone's, everyone's got it? Great, oh, thank you. Um, I hope, I hope uh, oh, Phil, you, 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 you asked first before you put a rope on. Okay. <laughs> Good. Uh, now, what you do, uh, so on this, uh, what Dylan has is the rightmost loop is kind of the free end, you know, with a long piece of rope hanging off of it. Okay, um, so in the following, I'm just going to assume that right means the free end. So take the right end and put it over the middle. So you're kind of switching it with the middle. So now the right has become the middle if you're reading the braid from top down. Yeah, so the the so do you see what Dylan's doing? Um, the, now there is a crossing between the right and the middle. Okay? I really want you to get this. We have 20 minutes to explain this. So please, if you, if you don't see the crossing, or you're not quite sure which way it goes, uh, well, I'm not sure if you can raise your hand, but raise something. Okay. All right. So now you switched right in the middle. So if you, again, you're reading the braid from top down, then the middle is now the, what used to be the right. The next step is to take what's on the left and also move it over the middle. Okay. Now, you remember the middle is what used to be the right. Okay. So, so now Dylan, so now Dylan has made that step. Okay. The, right on. Yeah, so first, right over middle, and second, left over middle. Got that? So we got two crossings. Okay, that's all, because what you need to do now is just to repeat. Yeah. Okay, so, so let's practice. So there's a loose end, which you kind of started on the right, and now it's kind of uh, moved to the left, but the end of that loose end is still to the right, so pull it through. The one's doing that now. Okay, so now it's coming out of the left. Yeah. Okay. This is some, this pulling through is something that you just kind of do once in a while, for example, now. Okay. It's going to get tight if you don't do it. So just, just, you know, when it gets kind of confusing, just pull the free end through. Okay. So the next step is the first step, which is right over middle. So Dylan's doing that. Okay. Another, another right over middle. If, now, of course, what's currently on the right is not what used to be on the right. Yeah. So take the current right if you're going top down. I'm sorry for this imperative language, but if you're reading top down, yeah, take the current right and put it over the current middle. And again, then the fourth step is the same as the second step, which is take the current left, the free end, and put it over the current middle. Okay, so it's always over, and the steps are left over middle, right over middle, left over middle, right over middle, and just keep repeating that. And as you keep repeating that, you kind of want to go down. So just turn, turn the three strings like that, Dylan is doing. Yeah, as you work so that you're always sort of facing what's the current point where you're working. And you just keep repeating that. Again, once in a while, pull the free end through. Sorry. That's it. Please, please, uh, please repeat until you either use up the radius or circumference that you left yourself or maybe you used up the rope. Probably you'll use up the circumference first. So uh, Dylan is doing that. This is not a race. Say again? Okay. Oh, who's winning? Oh, well, I don't know. If you're, ha if you're having more fun, then you win. Yeah. Uh, the question was, wouldn't this be uh, easier with three strings? Well, yeah, it would be, but then you end up with sort of a lot of free ends, right? I thought we, I would have said we do have three strands right now. Uh, yeah, so... Uh, 
Yeah, so so it would be nice to, oh, so maybe what, what the comment is uh, for pedagogical purposes. Yeah, it would have been good to have maybe, I, what I would have loved, and some people actually make this, you know, rope where was one section that's red, one section that's blue, one section that's green. Uh, and we're going to see that uh, in a minute, actually. We're going to draw that. But right now, the actual physical rope we have, sorry, is not dyed. The question was, what did I do wrong at the very beginning? <laughs> ah, huh. Huh, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't really know. Um, right, so you're always doing right over, mid, right to middle, then left to middle, um, and do, do them one at a time. And at some point, Ken did say, do right over middle, again, do right over middle. And he was just emphasizing that that's the next step rather than saying do it twice. But, um, and the answer to what was going wrong over there was that you only want to be working with the strands that are in front of, of the chair. Um, so, no, no, don't work with a doubled set of strands. Uh, work with a single set of strands. Okay, so uh, it was a great question. Uh, one of the great questions was, uh, wouldn't it be better with collar rope? And in particular, what you want in more complicated braids is uh, you want to distinguish between kind of the current free end and what you've already braided. Because in more complicated braids, it's not just when we got to the very last cycle that we have complicated stuff going on. You know, if you have like a seven, strand braids, then maybe starting with a third strand, you already have, or maybe second even, you already have complicated stuff going on. And you have to know kind of which crossing to make. Right? So this this brand, this, this is simple because you could do, over, it's always over, but sometimes you have both over and under. Okay, so, um, yeah, let's see. So we wrote a program, kind of, well, a DSL. <laughs> uh, oops, no, that's a code. Let's show the, the picture. Uh, we, sh we wrote a code to draw pictures, okay, um, and I'm going. And the idea is to design these uh, crossings. So I'm going to show you a picture eventually for what uh, we uh, try to get people to do. Okay, so uh, the, I, can you see the code? Maybe uh, I hope you can see the code below. Um, so uh, the idea is you can describe a braid by taking a bunch of threads, strands, and then exchanging them. And every time you exchange them, you have to decide wh which one goes on top. Right, so um, I've, uh, I'm sorry, uh, rotated this uh, picture so that imagine instead of going top down like on the coat rack, you're going left to right. So here we have three strands going from left to right, and they are numbered zero at the top, one, and two at the bottom. Okay, so uh, they're going right, but every time you want to exchange, you can use this crossing combinator. And what crossing zero means is to switch thread zero with thread one. So that's this crossing here. Positive means this kind of crossing where the top goes over the bottom as you go to the right. Uh, C010, that's actually, I'm sorry, just a Cartesian coordinate for where the crossing should be. So this is uh, zero is horizontal and 10 is vertical going up. Uh, finally, diagonals is uh, just uh, telling the tangents. Don't worry about that. Okay. So if you want another crossing, like uh, maybe you want to switch the bottom and the uh, middle, then I could do something like that. Uh, do I have that? Yeah, okay. And I, that just adds another crossing. Okay, and this is actually not the crossing we want, right? Because this is bottom under middle. We want bottom over middle, which is called negative. So I change that to negative, and that ch changes the crossing, okay? And now I want to repeat, right? Because again, I want to not just do one of these. So one way to repeat is just to change the coordinates, you know, add 10 to them, and now I got my uh, repeating pattern. But this gets a little bit, uh, 
uh, re well, repetitive, and you have to you know, write the loops to keep track of kind of the current location. And we don't really want to keep track, sounds familiar, of the absolute location we're currently working with. Instead, I really want to keep track of some kind of current location, and, uh, and all of my coordinates should be relative to that. Yeah, so this advance just means for, from now on, shift everything by that much. Okay, so this here means shift everything by 10 to the right. So this doesn't change the picture of what I just did, but what it does do is allows me to identify this repeating element here, okay? So this is step one and step two, and then shift down, like what Dylan was doing by rotating the braid. So what I can do then is to uh, repeat it many times, like uh, let's say five times, I can use dollar, we're, we're among friends, we can use dollar, okay. Um, all right, so that's like that. Okay, so this is good, and you can actually, uh, um, um, let's see, what, what do I wanna do now? Um, yeah, okay, so there are two things you can do with this. One thing is you can actually visualize a completed product in a circular way, okay. So uh, one thing you can do, well, I have to, uh, well, okay, let me show you, show you what's going on. Um, so, what, uh, th so what I just told you earlier, this unit business, is not actually uh, all of the code. There is some earlier code that says uh, start three threads and each one is going to be black. And then uh, just initially put, some, put each of the threads through some coordinate. Okay, and that's what I, how I made the horizontal. So I need, I need to, de I want to delete the initial points. So, the, so, so what I just deleted is what's giving me these uh, horizontal parts at the beginning. I don't really want the horizontal part, so I'm going to delete that. Okay, so that gives me, this is more like what I, what I have when I braid everything together. Say again? Where is the lambda? Oh, I didn't even, no, that was not intentional. Thank you, thank you. Um, yeah. Uh, but suppose I want to see what things look like. So there one thing is this, uh, I love this circular combinator, because when you say circular, what it does is it takes what you have so far and makes things into a circle. So now instead of one, uh, instead of three strands, you only need one strand. Oh, five is a too small a number. Let me make it bigger, like uh, 11 is a good number. Oops, let me make it smaller. Okay, so what we just did is uh, to take the same pattern and instead of going horizontally, go around in a circle, okay? And uh, I really hate, as a perfectionist, this little bit of uh, uh, sort of stub on the upper corner. So instead of open, I can make it closed. And that just sort of closes that corner. Okay, so now it's perfect. Okay, but thank you. Oh, but let me just show you one, one more thing, which is how you make these, okay? Um, Actually, to make these, uh, you don't want to make it circular because you know it's nice to see the finished product because it gives you no clue how to how to uh, start off. Okay, so instead, what we can do is uh, uh, let me show you this. Okay, so I'm going to uh, put the same picture of the same braid three times, like that but I'm going to time the pen down command. Think of beginning as pen down. Okay, so I'm going to start with one, only one thread, and then as the braiding continues, I can see the picture of what happens when I add the next thread. But what actually happens is that this is like one of those time travel puzzles, right, where, where you've come back to the beginning of a loop, and this new, what looks like a new thread is really what you made, you know, a, f a few moments ago, two pi ago, 360 degrees ago, okay? So, so, the, so you want to work with your previous self, and by the time you get the third time around, you're working with your two previous selves, okay? So what's really helpful here is, um, can I do that? If I color the initial one red, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, let me just call If you color initial one red, then you can tell that red is what you're currently working with, the free end and the black is what you've, uh, what, what you've already done. So at the, by the time it gets more complicated, you can tell which crossing is which. Okay. Um, that's all I want to show you. Um, there are some, yeah, Dylan, you have things to say. Yeah. So just one thing to notice here is that uh, in the middle section there, when we just had two strands, 
there, those two, there's some crossings, but actually you could just undo those crossings. And that's why we started off just looping them around twice. In the more complicated patterns, you might have something more complicated in there, and you need to plan ahead a little bit more. Yeah, so, so, so I'm going to show you one example of that planning ahead. So here's a pattern that starts with one strand, and I think the second one is already, you see, it's, it's kind of twisting. Like this goes under and over, so you can't quite undo that by the second time. And you keep going, and eventually you get something like this. And that's one rope, and it turns out it's useful to have another rope. And uh, yeah, and another rope. So with three ropes, you can make something like this. Okay. And I, I don't think that's one of those things that we have available here, but um, it, it's fun to make. And you can use collar rope to make that pattern. So it's kind of fun. Yeah. And that's like 20 lines of code. So Sorry, more questions? So Dan wants a machine, which is not a person. Dan, you want a machine. The question is, what's the mach is there a machine who is not a person, who can take a program and make things like this? Yeah, um, I don't know about these circular ones. If it's just a strip, then I think the answer is yes. Uh, it's like a rope machine, basically. But the circular ones, yeah, it's pretty tricky. I don't think, I'm not sure it's a machine. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's this con. Uh, let me see. So, so the question is, uh, you know, people make these braids, braids all the time. How do they describe these braids? And I'm having trouble finding there's like a canonical book where they have these braids described, not the circular ones. And what they do is they describe the switching. They decide which one to switch with which other one. And there's these tools you can use to make organize all the strands you have lying around. Um, and the, the, the description is basically this over that, this over that. And you just keep doing that. Yeah. I forget. I, I don't have the book here, but sorry. So the question is, if, if, if I study your code online, would I be able to find out what I did wrong? I wouldn't call it wrong, but just different. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> but um, we, we'll, we'll, uh, let, let's look at what you did in a, in a minute. It, it's beautiful. Thank you. Yes. Um, why do I think it would be harder for a machine uh, to do the circular one rather than the straight one? Because I think, oh, yeah, go. I, I would just say the pulling through operation is typically one that's hard for uh, machines to do. Yeah. So sewing machines are designed so that there's very little of that pulling through, for instance. So the question is, is this a hobby or is this someone's research, like maybe a, a research of a topologist? So maybe this is directed to the topologist. And you know, I, I don't know what's the difference. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, that's the end of the morning session. Uh, we, we've actually uh, finished a few minutes early. I do have one request for all of the presenters.